Section 6.3 is on vectors in the plane. And when you think about vectors, it's hard to visualize what they are because we only see where they've been. Um, here's kind of some examples of vectors in the real world. When you're playing pool, you have to think in terms of vector. What kind of force and what kind of direction do I need to sh shoot that pool ball at, another pool ball, in order to get what I'm hoping to get? Skid marks um, show you where that, that vehicle has been necessarily. Well, and also shows you the magnitude of when they started to peel out. Um, airplane trails, vapor trails, and so forth. So those are kind of ways of visualizing what vectors are as far as real-world vectors are concerned. So our book starts talking about directed line segments. And those are just line segments with a direction, meaning they have an arrow associated with them. So when you're describing force and velocity, it's important to be able to talk about the magnitude and the direction of that force and that velocity. That directed line segment, PQ, has an initial point P and a terminal point Q. And notice the notation here. Everybody see that on their paper? It's not a full-size arrow above it, is it? It's a half an arrow. Okay. The initial point is P. That's always the one listed first. The terminal point is where you're going to. That's your Q. So when we started from P to Q, notice we're starting at P, and the arrow goes to Q. That's our directed line segment. The segment with an arrow on one end saying the direction in which that is going. The magnitude of that directed line segment, or its length, can be found using the distance formula, especially when you've got two points, the original initial point and the terminal point. And the set of all directed line segments in a plane that are equivalent to this PQ is called vector V. Okay, So we can have a whole set of them that are equivalent. They have the same direction, they have the same magnitude, and therefore they're equivalent and they fall in that, that set of those segments. Okay, so we want to show that two vectors are equivalent. I'm missing my sp uh, smart ink settings. Okay, so in order to show that two line segments are equivalent, one of the questions they'll ask us to do is to, first of all, show that they have the same magnitude, and then also show that they have the same direction. Okay, two parts to a vector, magnitude and direction. So if we have point P at 1, 1, and point Q at 2, negative 2, 3, and we aren't given graph paper, we have to find this algebraically. So how would we find it algebraically? Good old, what's that formula? The distance formula. So we're taking the square root of, and then x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So a negative 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, so we get the square root of 13. Okay, And we also do the same with rs. The distance between r and s will be the square root of x2 minus x1, negative 6 plus 3 squared, and then y2 minus y1. 2 minus 0 squared, so negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3 squared, or 9. 2 minus 0 is 2 squared is 4, so again we get the square root of 13. They have the same magnitude. What would we do to show that they have the same direction? We could find the right angle here, right? 
and ask ourselves how much is it what so if it's graph we could have done this as well and said this was 2 this is 3 2 squared plus 3 squared gets me that right we could find an angle at r with the with this this horizontal line now that we know trig right okay what is this guy doing though is he going up or down no looks like he's going up right but he's going up and to the left right so find the slope that's what i was looking for okay we can find the slope of this how much do we rise two how much do we run negative 3, right, because we went to the right. So SR has a slope of 2 over negative 3. PQ has a slope, I should say RS. What's P P PQ slope? Yep, 2 over negative 3. So same magnitude, same direction. These are equivalent. Okay. If I did not have them graphed, I could use the y2 minus y1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Next slide. Vectors. When we take a vector and we move it to it, the origin for its initial point, we call that standard position. A terminal point of a vector in standard position is at v sub one, v sub two, and that's called the and it's and it's called the component form. Okay, the component form looks like this. Now, notice the chevrons. Those are not parentheses. They're not brackets. They're not greater than and less than symbols. They're a specialized symbol for component form of vectors, the chevron. So in this particular case, the component form of ED, we went four units left and two units up. So since we went from E to D, four units left, Positive two up, left is positive, up is positive, or left is negative, up is positive, right is positive, down is negative. We end up with a component form of negative four two. Okay. So far so good. All right. Next slide then has a whole bunch of vectors. They're not in standard position, but I want you to tell me what the component form would be if we translated them all so that their initial point was at the origin. Tell me what their component form would be. Left is negative, right is positive, down is negative, up is positive.
Everybody get the same thing I did? Okay. Component form of a vector. All right. It's actually like an ordered pair, but you just tell me which which direction you went. So the x value is still the x value in it from an ordered pair, and this is telling me I moved three to the right because it's positive, and I moved two up because that's positive. Okay, from zero zero, if these were in standard position, I would have gone seven back, and nothing up. Seven to the left. Okay. So to find the component form of vector v, and notice we've bold, or at least the textbook does, all of these vector names. Okay, So they're going to bold v if they want you to know that that's a vector. And we're wanting to find the component form of this vector with an initial point at 1, 4, and a terminal point at 4, 2. So let's figure out if we can, first of all, do it algebraically. What do you think we'll do if we want to have a starting point at 1, 4 and an ending point at 4, 2 and we're like we're translating it back to the origin? You just subtract them. So what do we start? Subtract, start with the terminal point minus the initial or the initial point minus the terminal? Okay, let's try initial minus terminal and see if it works. So we think that it might be 1 minus 4, x minus x, 4 minus 2, and see if that's right. Okay, so 1 minus 4 would be a negative 3. That means we're moving 3 in the left direction. 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. That means that we're moving 2 in the up direction. Did we go left 4 and up 2? No. Okay, so that didn't work. So what are we going to do instead? Terminal minus initial. Okay, so when we take the terminal minus the initial, still x minus x, so 4 minus the 1, and then y minus y, the terminal point is 2 minus 4, not a comma. And I want to put in my chevron. But my eraser will work. So 4 minus 1 is 3 in the positive x direction, negative 2 in the y direction. So if we translated this, we would be starting at the origin, going 3 in the positive x direction, 2 in the negative y direction. Does that have the same magnitude and direction? Yes. Make sense? Next one. So the magnitude of a vector, they're going to give us some more symbology here. It's going to be the absolute value symbol twice. <laughs> like a parallel line, V, parallel line, V. Or you know, the parallel symbol. So when we talk about the magnitude of a vector, we saw that we could use the distance formula when we had two points, the initial point and the terminal point. But we can also, when it's in standard position, say that I have gone A units to the right or left and B units up or down. What does this remind you of? Specifically what kind of triangle? A right triangle and there was an old guy, the name that started with a P. The Pythagorean, the Pythagorean theorem can help us with this, right? So our magnitude, our distance, our length of our vector is c, and the square root of a squared plus b squared would get us that c. So that's where that comes from. Okay. So take the square root of your x component squared plus your y component squared, and you're good. Okay. That will get you the magnitude. So what is the magnitude of vector u? that has component form negative 3, 8. 
How would I find it? Negative 3 squared plus 8 squared. Under the radical, right? Okay, so negative 3 squared is 8 squared is 9 and 64. That's the magnitude of vector u. Square root of 73. It won't break. This one's not going to break down. If there was one that could break down, absolutely. Yep, take your perfect squares out. Pull them out and leave what's inside left. Okay? But that one can't be simplified. Everybody good? All right, next slide. So when we're adding vectors, the sum or resultant of two vectors is also called a vector. And vectors u and v can be added using either tail-to-head addition or parallelogram addition. So if I wanted to know if I combine this magnitude and direction with this magnitude and direction, where would I end up? So one of them is called tail-to-head. I start with one. And at the tail of, or the head of one, I, I create, or start with the tail. So it looks like this. Okay, he just gets moved, shifted down, or translated. And then once he's translated, we want the result from the tail to the new head. So far, so good. So we started from u to v. Or start, we have our vector u. We tacked on our vector v, and then the, from the tail of u to the head of v is the resultant vector, u plus v. The other method is called the parallelogram method. Parallelogram method says put u with v, same, translate v down so that they have the same tail, right? And then we draw a parallelogram, okay? And then we connect, find the diagonal of that parallelogram. They get you the same thing. It's just two different ways of showing that. So you can either start with one, tack on the next from the original initial point to that new endpoint is where we're at. Or you can start with one at the same point, same initial point, put, start with the other, Make a parallelogram and find the diagonal. Depends on your perspective. That's writing. Okay. So far, so good? All right. So if we're given that u has a component form of negative 2, 1, and v has a component form of 4, 3, or to find u plus v. How do you think we'll do that algebraically? Let's give it a shot. What do you think we'll do? So the suggestion is that it's probably negative 2 plus 4. And erase that since I kept going. And then 1 plus 3. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 1 plus 3 is 4. Let's see if that's our result. Okay. If I went negative 2, 1, here I am. Negative 2, 1 means I went 2 in the left direction, 1 up. That was u. Here's v. v is 4, 3. 4 in the right, positive right direction. 3 up. Helps if I draw a straight line. Helps if my board is oriented properly. Okay. So, do it either way. We can start with this one's endpoint and then move it back 
u said this was v. We could start with u and, sh and move v over. v said I want to be 4 over and 3 up. Okay, this would be my resultant vector. Okay, which was 2, 4. Okay, or we could have done the parallelogram method. Anybody want to see the parallelogram method? So the answer to this is 2, 4. You don't want to graph these, right? It's a whole lot of work when it's a very, very easy math. Mm -hmm. So when we're adding, we're adding, but when we're subtracting, we have to think about it as adding the opposite. Okay? We're, we're not subtracting magnitudes, we're adding the opposite of that magnitude. We're changing the direction of it. Okay? So u minus v. u was negative 2, 1. So we're going to take negative 2 and we're going to add the opposite of v. We're going to take 1 and add the opposite of the y component of v. So negative 2 and negative 4. 1 and negative 3. Okay. And what do you think is going to happen if we take a scalar and multiply it by a component or a component form of a vector. Four times u. What do you think we'll get? Negative eight four. Your instincts are right. Because what we're doing is we're taking u, which was negative two one, and we're expanding it four times over. There's one of them two of them, three of them, four of them, that would be the resulting vector. Okay, four times as large, scaling it up. So far so good? All right. Don't write these down. Refer to page 421. Okay, but what these are are the properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication. It tells us that Adding vectors is commutative. We can change the order and it won't impact the, pro the, the answer. Also associative. We can group them differently and it won't change the, the re resulting addition. We have an identity vector. Okay, It's a, it's a vector that with a magnitude of 0, basically the point zero, 0, And when we add it to it, we'll get the same original vector back. If we add the opposite of a vector, we'll get that identity. We'll get a point zero zero if it's in standard position. Notice the bolding here. Those are vectors. These are scalars. So we can change the order of scalar multiplication. So multiplication with scalars is commutative property. And the associative property of the scalars with multiplying is also going to work as is distributive. Okay. And then finally, when we multiply by the identity vector, we're going to get the vector back, multiply by the zero, we'll get zero back. Magnitudes also work. Okay? So don't write those down, don't memorize them, but they're on page 421 if you want to refer back to them. All right, so direction angle is the next piece of this. The direction angle is the measure of the angle between the vector and the positive x-axis. Keyword there is the positive x-axis. So if we're trying to find the directed ang direction angle for vector AB, what was this distance? What's this distance? The vertical distance? How high do we go up? How far do we go right? Okay. 
How do you think that we're going to find this angle theta here? How would we find this theta? The tangent. The tangent of theta will be the y value, the v part of our component form over the a. And then inverse tangent. Okay, make sense? So if we wanted to find the direction angle for 5, 4, I went 5 in the positive x direction, 4 in the positive y direction. If I want this angle theta, I wrote that wrong? No, I, I wrote it right. Okay, so 4 here and 5 here. Tangent of theta will be 4 over 5. Check it out on your calculator. What do we get? 4 over 5 inverse tan. They have their calculator handy. If I get 38.66. Okay. All right. So if I wanted the direction angle for the vector for the component form of the vector with a, um, of negative 3, 8. I always go to the x, positive x-axis. So what is this theta? My b is 8. My a is negative 3, right? So yep, tangent of theta is 8 over negative 3. Which two quadrants are, were was tangent defined in? One and it's it's positive in the first, right? But we defined it only if we were wanting the inverse tangent. We defined it only in two quadrants. Remember which ones? This is its positive, and this would be its negative in quadrant 2, because it was defined between 0 and pi over 2. Sine was between 0 and pi over 2, and cosine was between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, third and fourth quadrants. Okay. So when we do tangent of theta is 8, third, 8 over negative 3, We get negative 69.44. Okay, so if this is negative 69.44, what do I do to get my directed angle? You can, you don't have to. The big thing to be pay attention to though is that you're in the second quadrant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we made this triangle in the second quadrant, and that was 8 and that was 3. So when we're over here, don't just stop with negative 69.44, because what's this angle right here? 180 minus that 69.44. So if you have it in your calculator and you add 180 to it, you'll get 110.56, and that's our theta that we're looking for. Okay, so you can ignore the negative 3 if you want to and find the inverse tangent of 8 thirds, but you have to remember that it's not in that first quadrant. You have to take 180 minus it. Okay, it's bigger than that 69.44 degrees. You okay, Stephen? Okay, trying to read visual clues. Anybody frowning? Everybody's good? All right, unit vector. A unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1. A unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1. So 
we've scaled it back so it's distance, its length is 1. Vector u is the unit vector of v if we take 1 divided by v's magnitude times the component form of v. Okay? So that u is a scalar multiple of v. The vector u is a vector with a magnitude of 1. It's the same direction as v. So how does this work? We want to find the unit vector of negative 3 8. First we have to find magnitude. How do we find the magnitude? Yep, negative 3 squared plus 8 squared under the radical. And what do we find that to be? Square root of 73 plus. Yep. So this was the square root of 73. So the magnitude was the square root of 73. So all I'm doing then is I'm going to take 1 over the square root of 73 times each of these. So negative 3 over the square root of 73 and 8 over the square root of 73. But we never like to have radicals in the denominator. So we simplify that as negative 3 square roots of 73 over 73 and 8 square roots of 73 over 73. And that's our answer. See that all this is very easy math, all based on things that you've done before. We've had a lot of little things to talk about today. All right, we're good. Next slide. So standard unit vectors and linear combination notation. You've probably seen this in your physics classes. Okay. When you want to write it in stand as standard unit vectors, we write i and j, for example. i is the horizontal component. j is the vertical component. So it's like taking that component form of a vector and multiplying it by i will get the negative 3. So this is negative 3i. We multiply the component form by j. The 0 makes the negative 3 go away, and we get a positive 8. So we have to add that negative 3i plus 8j together, and that's our linear combination notation. They want to, I don't, I'm not sure, yeah, I don't I and J, U and V. The I part, we, we're taking three, negative 3, 8 times the I. When we take those t times each other, we'll get negative 3 and 0, right? And that's our I. Okay? When we take that same vector, that component form, times the J, the 3 goes away, we get 8. So we call that 8j. So it's negative 3i plus 8j. Okay? Likewise, if we had it in the standard notation, or the um, combination notation of 4i minus 3j, you can pull it back out to component form. Okay? Um, we'll use it for different applications coming up. There are times when component form is better, and there's times when the, um, the linear combination notation is better. Okay, so far so good? That's your assignment. Continue on tomorrow, Monday.